Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very, very special night here at the Heibitz Institute. Perhaps my tie will tell you what's going to happen tonight. For those of you who are not musically inclined, um, this is a bass clef. And yes, there will be lots of basses tonight. <laughs> It's only been a few years since we had the uh, double basses here on campus. Uh, we've, of course, always had violins, violas, and cellos, but uh, Nick Kitchen and I felt that truly to be a string institute, we really needed to hear the foundational sound of strings, which is, of course, uh, the double bass. So uh, we do have a double bass workshop led by the redoubtable Samuel Suggs, uh, who teaches uh, bass at uh, James Madison University and Sam came to our attention first as the youngest and one of the very rare uh, people to win a major uh, competition, the Concert Artists Guild, which basically has a competition for young emerging artists as a contrabassist. He was the first one in three and a half decades uh, to be so honored. And uh, we knew a good thing when we saw it and we snapped him up. And uh, we are so thrilled to have Sam here back with us for his fourth year and also uh, some incredible students of his whom you will hear performing tonight. So that's all going to happen in the second half. Uh, this is the time of year during week six when we are trying to get as many as students as possible uh, onto our programming. So our, we're in essence going to be having music from top to bottom today uh, with um, a lot of solo violin in the first half of our program before the basses take the stage. Now, this is also as our week six, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it maybe perhaps a little more explicitly this time. Um, we are also, this is the one time during the entire summer where we do come to you and ask you for a little support to get us over the finish line. We have the week six challenge of $20,000, and I'm very pleased to tell you that thanks to the people watching online, especially on YouTube, uh, that number now stands at $5,948. So that's not bad. <laughs> I should confess that that includes the $37 that I put in the tip jar. So, and that's meant to be an incentive for all of you. So if you find it in your hearts, uh, from the bottom of your base heart to the top of the string chart, uh, to support the Institute, uh, we do have some envelopes uh, out there. And if you're watching us online, of course, upper right-hand side, a little button says donate. Anyway, please enjoy the program. We really have a lot of exciting music to share with you tonight. And so happy to see some. Good evening, everyone. For those of you that do not know me already, my name is Dexter Doris, and I'm a violinist from New York. Tonight, I am not joined by pianist Jessica Osborne, and I am also not joined by any other colleague or member of the esteemed piano faculty here at the Heifetz Institute. Instead, I have the stage to myself, and for the brief moment that I'll spend with all of you in the audience tonight, I hope that that is a good thing. I said I hope. Um, so the piece that I will be performing for you tonight is, it can be taken as one of the most controversial works for the violin, if not for all classical music literature. And that piece is no other than STOMP, S-T-O-N-P, in all capital letters, by American composer John Corigliano. Now, this piece, has its fair share of challenges. As you can expect from the title, I will, in fact, be stomping my foot throughout this whole piece. And I challenge you to not get scared because my teacher last time told me that I accidentally gave somebody a heart attack in the audience. So I pray that that will not happen tonight. If it does, 
I don't have the money for those medical bills, so I'm sorry. So, but the biggest challenge in this piece is not only the stomping, but rather is it, it is a technique called scordatura. Now, for those of you that do not know what scordatura is, allow me to explain. Scordatura is the art of tuning the strings on an instrument up or down to different pitches that are indicated to us by the composer in our sheet music. Now, a normal violin is tuned as the following. We have the G string followed by the D, A, and E strings. But Corleano does a little something different. Instead of the E, he takes the top string of the instrument and asks me to tune it down a half step to an E flat, which sounds like this. But if you think that isn't challenging enough, this might be. Corleano also asks me to change the lower string, the lowest string actually on my instrument to, well, here for yourself. That's a pretty big difference, if you can agree with me there. But aside from all these challenges, I think that this piece does have bigger purposes. For one, it provides all of you in the audience with a great showpiece that is filled with technical virtuosity and intense lyricism. But for me, this piece is not only a challenge for me, but it also serves as a testament as to the privileges and the tragedies of living in this modern life. Thank you.
Good evening. Good evening. I'm very excited to be here in, to perform for the last time here in this summer institute. It was a very nice summer with my amazing colleague, Jessica Osborne. My name is Ravani. I'm 17 years old. We will play for you a piece quite different from what you just heard. <laughs> a poem by the French composer Ernest Chausson. Because of like the poem is very long, I will keep my speech very short. <laughs> I will just ask you one singular lonely question. Have you ever felt love, sorrow, or acceptance? I find that this piece describes very well all these to be feelings. And I hope that at the end, I will manage to give you a new aspect, maybe another layer to this world. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. My name is Kaon Kim, and I'm from South Korea, and I'm 21 years old, and I'm currently studying at Curtis Institute. Today, I'm going to play Honjo Nori by Youngjo Lee. It is such an honor to play this piece because he's also Korean. One thing I have I want to share with you is that there are a lot of Korean traditional instruments he wants to introduce. Let me show one instrument from Korea. It's called Changgu. It's Korean traditional drum. He composed this sound with this kind of rhythm and bow stroke. And there are one more Korean traditional instrument, which is called as kayagum. It's also a string instrument and also sounds like. Yeah, so he introduced this instrument by using pizzicato. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy.
Good evening. My name is Josie, and I'm a 15-year-old violinist from Brookline, Massachusetts. Tonight, my wonderful pianist, Mickey, and I will be playing the first movement of Violin Concerto No. 3 in B minor by Sassons. Sassons wrote this piece in 1880 while he was in Spain, and he dedicated it to his friend, the Spanish violin virtuoso and composer, Sarasate. You can definitely hear the Spanish influence in this piece, especially in the rhythm and in the passion, the flair, and all the different colors that he created in the music. I found that there are so many different ways to interpret and play this piece, and I've really enjoyed experimenting with the different colors and characters, and I'm really excited to share this music with you all tonight. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening. My name is Grace, and I am a 16-year-old violinist from Irvine, California, where I study at the Colburn Academy of Music. Um, Nikki, my wonderful pianist, and I will today be telling you a variation on a story that I'm sure you've heard many times before. The Carmen Fantasy on Themes by Bizet, arranged by um, Franz Waxman. Now, I'm sure Carmen as a story needs no introduction, but I'll give you my take just for the sake of it. <laughs> Carmen, a young, seductive, and a little manipulative gypsy girl, meets a ton of men, screws most of them over, has <laughs> a brief existential crisis, and eventually dies a tragic but really karmic death at the hands of one of the aforementioned men. Well, I think personally for me, this piece is a little like driving a Formula One car. It's um, one part life or death, two parts painful, and 20 parts adrenaline. And I think it's just as entertaining to watch as a Formula One race. And now that my hands are extremely cold and the last hour I spent warming up has been entirely erased from my fingers, <laughs> I hope that you are thoroughly entertained by the next nine minutes or eight minutes if I get it done especially quickly. Thank you. <laughs>
And now the fun begins. Uh, just a, a quick uh, program reminder. So for the six remaining concerts in the next two days, uh, we will be here for our final Stars of Tomorrow concert at 1 o'clock here in Francis Auditorium. Admission is free, but of course it's the Week 6 challenge, so there will be the donation envelopes and the, you know, the free will donation, they call it. Uh, then our final Celebrity Series concert is at 5 o'clock for the reception, once again uh, being the wine coming from... Baron Ridge Vineyards, and at 6 o'clock, our final concert, which will be capped by the recalling of the program, Brahms Bids Farewell, what Brahms figured would be his final piece, his magnificent uh, string quintet. Uh, we'll be hearing that along with a wonderful uh, piece by Izai, played by our faculty violinist, Andres Cardenas, also the uh, interesting trio by Ernest Bloch, uh, featuring Haggai Shaham on our violin faculty, Peter Stump on our cello faculty and pianist Elizabeth Hill. Should be really quite, quite a program. Um, now, I said this a few days ago, but the, the stories and the narratives that emerge over the course of a summer here um, are both of what happens here in one summer and in previous summers, makes me think of them. Um, Dexter Doris, who played that incredible stomp piece, um, 24 hours ago, he didn't have a violin. Well, I should say that his, I'm actually into old cars as well as old violins, and sort of the, the equivalent on an old car of the front end going out, um, his sound post is having troubles. And so we had to find him a violin lickety split that he could play that piece on. And uh, thanks to uh, David McCormick, who's the executive director of Early Music America and the former director of Three Notch Road, he had a spare violin, and we managed to get it into Dexter's hands, which then made me think of hearing that poem, that beautiful poem that Ravani played. Um, and it actually leads directly into what I'm going to introduce to you next. So, Rav, so many years ago, 2017, uh, we had an incredible performance of that poem. And the very last, like last 10 seconds of the piece, of that drawn out beautiful chord, Someone who was sitting in the front row had their cell phone go off. I'll bet some of you were in the audience and remember that moment. Um, and and the, the, the poor person whose cell phone was just completely mortified. He just aghast at it. Um, that performance was a, just a riveting performance. And uh, I'd forgotten about it, but what we actually marked it at the time, what a great performance it was, but you know, too bad about that cell phone. Well, fast forward to 2022, and that performer was uh, a young woman named Hannah Cho, who was with us in 2017. She became, in February, the first Korean-American woman ever to join the Vienna Philharmonic. Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a bad gig, as they say. Uh, and so... I had an aha moment and uh, consulted with my media team and they worked a few miracles and we actually posted that video, you can find it on our YouTube channel, of this incredible 2017 performance. Just to remind you of, of where these students go and with the journeys that they're on. So I thought I would take a moment, we, we started doing this last year, but there are some incredible people working behind the scenes to make the 52,300 subscribers that we have on our YouTube channel and the 12 million viewers I want to share with you some of the people that make that all possible. If they would just come out for a moment now. So, so from left to right, this is Zoe and Gray, who are both interns who are study at, at uh, Peabody Conservatory at Johns Hopkins. Derek Song, who just graduated from Berkeley, and Derek was a student here in 2017. 
Alex Doherty, who was with us, just graduated from Shenandoah Conservatory and uh, worked for us last summer and is back for his second summer. Duke Marcos is the head of multimedia. He is my old colleague from NPR days and doing an incredible job. He came here directly from the Spoleto Festival where he's in charge of all the chamber music recording. And Bill Liu and Ibeth Pinzon are the ones who've been snapping all those great pictures that you see on, on our Facebook page and our Instagram page and all over our website. So once again, the Heifetz 2022 multimedia team. Now let's give them a moment to get the, uh, get, get the internet stream wound up again so that we can have a double bass showcase. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming back after intermission um, for this wonderful double bass showcase. Um, my name is Sam Suggs. I'm the professor of bass here. Um, I'm very excited to have joined this faculty five years ago now, uh, way before the pandemic. Um, and it's a privilege to share the stage with all these wonderful students tonight. Um, the double bass showcase will be framed by two works by Giovanni Bottasini who is kind of our patron saint of bass. Um, he was well known as a composer, an opera conductor, and a performer, virtuoso performer. And you'll see two different sides of his compositional life here. Um, the first piece of the concert, or of this half of the concert, um, is a movement from his grand duetto, number three, um, which he wrote for his teacher and him to play together back when he was studying at the conservatory in Milan. Um, Potassini apparently when he auditioned for the conservatory didn't play so well and he told the professors showcase okay, thank you so much
Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. My name is Noah Daniel. I'm 19 years old, and I study at the Royal Academy of Music in London. I've traveled a bit to come to this wonderful festival. Um, I came last year. This is my second time, and I'm so excited to be here with you um, for another year. Tonight, Jing and I will be playing my transcription of Telemann's Cello Sonata in D major, the first and the last movements. Telemann was quite loved by his contemporaries, Bach and Handel specifically. Um, so much so, in fact, he was godfather to Bach's son, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. Um, and it's quite remarkable. He was almost completely self-taught. Um, and his parents really hated the idea of him being a musician. They forced him to go to law school, um, which he promptly dropped out of. Um, and I think we're all better for it. So thank you so much.
Hi, I'm Harry Barnett. I'm 15. I'm from Houston, Texas. And today I'm going to be playing Iberic Peninsulaire by the French Syrian virtuoso bassist Francois Rabath. Rabath um, has written several miniature pieces like this, but I think this one is unique in its ability to convey many different instruments from in and around the Iberian Peninsula on just the bass. Thank you.
Hello. Um, there we go. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this next piece kind of nicely follows the story that Harry told about this Iberian Peninsula right before the two, the two shepherds before the storm. And you hear the storm rush in and then silence. Um, and this piece begins with silence. This is a composition of mine called Postlude. And it was inspired by the smell of petrichor, that first rain on dry soil, when suddenly there's all this stuff in the air and you feel the, the freshness of spring. Um, so it imitates on the bass this, um, through harmonics, the use of these ringing harmonics, the sounds of the rain and this hopefully very uh, ambient and beautiful thing that is petrichor. Um, and I think, you know, throughout this program, we're showcasing the instrument in ways that it's not often heard. The bass becoming another instrument, the bass becoming like a violin, competing with the violin on the last piece. And um, so this is kind of a way of also saying the bass, it has its own voice. It's not just the big cello, um, even though we play a lot of cello music. Um, so I hope you enjoy this postlude. Thank you very much.
Hello. My name is Gregory Patterson. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I study at um, Indiana University's Jacobs School of Music. And today we will be playing O Sacrum Convivium by Messiaen. O Sacrum Convivium, to me, sounds a lot like a spell from Harry Potter, <laughs> but unfortunately it is not. It is actually a choir piece by Messiaen, and it translates to a sacred banquet that is usually played at celebrations. So this is, I guess you could say, our base banquet in a way. Yeah, uh, base banquet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Good evening, everybody. My name is Julie Dasan. I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Turkey. And I'm a student at the Colburn Conservatory of Music in Los Angeles. Hi, my name is Sohyun Ko. I'm 16 years old, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Today, our wonderful pianist, Mickey, and we are really excited to perform Grandio Concertante by Botticini. Now, I can stand here and I can tell you a lot of facts about Botticini, but I think that it's getting late at night, so I might just tell you all a little story. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a very weird little girl. She had a very strange interest and an even stranger talent. She was around seven or eight. Now, what is this interest, you might ask? Heavy metal music. I'm talking Metallica, Iron Maiden, Motorhead, the works. And luckily, she played the drums and refused to learn any sheet music. She would learn all of the beats by herself, by ear. Now, she and her sister and dad formed a little family band and would play in pubs all around Tokyo. And this was all great and well until the 9.0 earthquake in Japan struck and she was unceremoniously moved to Canada six days later. So, in her new school, she had to pick an orchestra instrument as part of fifth grade class. So she walked in, looked at everything and said, yeah, I'd like to play the bass. One small problem, she was a cool four foot eight tall. So, her orchestra director said, would you care to play viola? So she said, sure played one note and said, never again. I would like to play the bass. So, <laughs> so this girl put aside her love for the drums and her love for heavy metal and decided to step into the world of classical music. And boy, did she love it. But every now and then, a small twinge of sadness would hit her that she could no longer share her love for this crazy music. Cut to 10 years later, this girl steps one foot onto the Heifetz campus and learns that she's to play the Grand Duo Concerto by Botticini, which is in the repertoire just about the closest thing you can get to Metallica. So, for you all tonight, I invite you to open up your operatic minds as well, as you'll hear the arias and the kind of opera buffa in this piece, but I want everyone in the audience to channel their inner Metallica fan and accept the music as the crazy rocking music that it is. Thank you.
the Heifetz International Music Institute and its Festival of Concerts, more than 50 live concerts in Stanton, Virginia, and daily programs streaming worldwide. Full calendar and information at heifetzinstitute.org. <laughs>